Hello, this is Domenico Composto with Easynomics, and today we're going to look at the supply curve in micro. We'll, we'll be looking at non-price determinants of supply with particular focus on competitive supply, two scenarios of competitive supply. So let's go ahead and begin uh, making a few notes. So quickly, we're just going to take a, a look at the list of non-price determinants. of supply since we've already looked at demand. And there are several uh, variables other than price that have caused the supply curve to shift outward or inward. And the first is changes in the costs of production. So any change any change to resource prices, and we remember these include land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship, any change in the price of these inputs will impact the supply curve to either shift outward or inward. So if the cost of production rises, the supply curve will also rise or shift to the left. If the cost of productions fall, then the supply curve will shift downward or to the right. Number two, prices of related goods. And this is what we're gonna be looking at today. Pr prices of related goods, similar to another video I was look, uh, that we did regarding demand, substitutes, and complements. And here there are two types of price-related goods that are linked to supply that we'll be looking at. And this is competitive supply, which is what we'll be doing for today's video, and joint supply. And we'll do another video focused on joint supply. Okay. Number three, indirect taxes and subsidies also impacts the supply curve. Indirect taxes and subsidies. And later on in your IV course, when you look at government intervention, it'll be focused on the impact of taxes on subsidies on the supply curve. Four, future price expectations. Right. Um, five, changes in technology. And technology typically, if not always, causes the supply curve to shift out of it. We get improved efficiency. And last, the number of firms entering the industry. More and more firms enter the industry, the increase in the supply, the number of firms. So today's lesson is focused on number two. And particularly, we're going to be focused on competitive supply for this particular video, graphing and analyzing an example that can illustrate this. OK? So let's, uh, let's begin. Let's quickly erase these notes and draw Non-price determinants of supply, price of related goods, in this case, joint supply. So we're going to create, use two graphs to illustrate this. We will have one over here and another over here. Again, we're looking at non-price determinants of supply. And we're looking specifically at price of related goods. And today we'll be focused on competitive supply. Right. We're looking at competitive supply. So competitive Imagine, for example, you have a farmer 
This is their plot of land. And they're going to allocate half of their land towards wheat production and the other half of the land towards corn production. If the farmer wants to increase the, their output of wheat, that will come at the cost of corn. They will have to sacrifice corn production in order to increase wheat production. So if they decide to take another quarter of the land away from corn towards wheat production, you would see a decrease in corn production. All of this, 75% of the land dedicated towards wheat while corn has been reduced. So if the price of wheat went up and the farmer was to increase their output, they would need to reallocate land away from corn towards wheat. And as a result, the supply of corn would decrease. So that's what we're going to illustrate. Okay, so we're going to have two graphs, one for the market for corn and one for the market for wheat. Here we go. So let's uh, label this one. This is graph A, the market for wheat. And in this graph, graph B, we're looking at the market for corn. corn and wheat. So we'll have our upward sloping supply curves. Here is supply of wheat and here we're going to have the supply of corn. We're going to label our x-axis quantity and our y-axis we're measuring price. We're going to label this S1 and then we'll label this S2 and we'll have a particular price set at P1 and Q1 for the wheat market. Price at P1, quantity supplied at Q1, and we'll do the same over here for corn. Particular price set at P3, particular quantity supplied at Q3. So here we're at point A, and here we're at point C. Okay. So in the market for wheat, the farmer notices that the price of wheat is, is rising as a result of perhaps increased demand. So price is rising from P1 to P2, and the farmer will respond to that by increasing their output from Q1 to Q2, moving along their supply curve from point A to point B. Farmers or any firm would have the incentive to do this because we have to remember that our supply curve is equal to our marginal cost curve. This is the additional cost of production when we increase output by one unit. So if price is at P1 and costs are here along our supply curve, the difference between the price and the cost of production is what we call our producer surplus. You can also say that this is the profit margin of the firm. And if price rises further, and these are their increased cost of production, their profit margin margin gets larger. Thus, the firm has the incentive to increase output when price rises. So, uh, the farmer is responding. They see the increase in the price from P1 to P2. Quantity supply is increased from Q1 to Q2, and that's coming at the cost of land for corn. They're going to have to reallocate land away from corn towards wheat, and that will result in the supply of corn decreasing from S2 to S3. And as we see, the quantity supplied along their S3 curve is less than before. They're at Q4, moving from point C to point D. There is a decrease in the supply. So we notice in this particular case, when, we, when we're talking about competitive supply, that price of one product and demand of the other product move in opposite directions. The price of wheat is rising, causing the demand, I'm sorry, the supply, let's not confuse this with demand. As the price of uh, wheat rises, the supply of corn decreases. And that's our first scenario. All right, so this is scenario number one, where we're seeing the price of one product increasing 
and the supply curve of the other decreasing. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would on a paper one exam or potentially paper two, paper three for the new uh, IB syllabus. As can be seen, we have two graphs illustrating the market for wheat and the market for corn. Graph A is the market for wheat. Graph B is the market for corn. We are measuring quantity on the x-axis of both graphs and price on the y-axis of both graphs. We notice that we have an upward sloping supply curve according to the law of supply, labeled S1, S2, S3. And now let's take a look at the market for wheat. The price of wheat is set at P1, providing a quantity supplied at Q1, point A. And in the market for corn, we notice a price set at P3 with a quantity supplied along the S2 curve at Q3, which is point C. As a result of a rise in price in wheat from P1 to P2, the farmer has the incentive to increase the quantities applied from Q1 to Q2 to increase their producer surplus, increasing their profit, which is a movement along the supply curve from point A to point B. But in order for the farmer to increase their output of wheat, they must reallocate land away from corn production towards wheat, which means less available land for corn production leading to a decrease in the supply of corn from S2 to S3. While prices held constant at P3 for corn, we see that there's a, a decrease in the quantity supplied from Q3 to Q4 along their new S3 curve, which is point D. So that's how we would analyze that on a paper one exam. Now let's look at a, another scenario. So we can just use the same type of graph, We're just relabeling slightly. And here we're going to be dealing with a fall in price, taking a look at what happens to the supply of corn. Okay. So scenario two. Almost there. Perfect. All right. So let's begin with scenario number two. In scenario, in scenario number two, we're going to have the price of wheat fall and that will cause the supply of corn to increase. Okay. So we have price set for wheat at P1 with the quantity supply at Q1. This is point A. And in the market for corn, we're starting here at point C along our S2 curve with quantity supplied at Q3. So the farmer notices that the price of wheat is falling from P1 to P2. Thus, they're going to decrease their quantity supplied from point A to point B or from Q1 to Q2. This is a movement along the supply curve. Because they're decreasing their output of wheat, that frees up land for increased corn production. So the farmer can reallocate land away from wheat towards corn. That leads to an increase in the supply of corn from S2 to S3. And we see that corn supplies increase from Q3 to Q4 at their new supply curve of S3, point C to D. So that is scenario two. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would on the paper one exam. As can be seen, we have two graphs, graph A, the market for wheat, graph B, the market for corn. We're measuring quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. We have three upward sloping supply curves labeled S1, S2, and S3 in accordance to the law of supply. And we notice that in the market for wheat, price is set at P1 with the quantity supplied at Q1, which is point A. And in the market for corn, we see a price of P3 establishing a quantity supplied along their S2 curve at Q3 which is point C. As a result of, of a fall in price for wheat from P1 to P2, the farmer decides to decrease their quantity supplied from Q1 to Q2, which is a movement along the supply curve from point A to point B. As a result of their decrease in the quantity supplied of wheat, that frees up available land, which can be reallocated towards corn production. So the far farmer is able to produce more corn, and we notice that although price is held constant for corn at P3, the supply of corn has increased from S2 to S3. 
thus leading to an increase in the quantity of supply along the new S3 curve at Q4, which is point D. And that's it. That's how we would, we would uh, draw and analyze competitive supply. One scenario with price rising, leading to a uh, fall in supply of the other product. Or in scenario two, we had price falling for wheat, leading to an increase in supply of corn. Thank you so much. And in the next video, I will go over joint supply.